Squad 17 is taking shape. The University of Miami football team's early enrollees are right here on campus at the U, and they're locked in as Hurricanes. Who better to talk about some of the newest Canes, some of the most decorated Canes of all time? We've got some of the best players to ever wear the orange and green, including this man sitting right here, Jonathan Vilma, coming through to give you their thoughts on the newest Canes, as well as share some of their experiences as Hurricanes. Jonathan Vilma, as I mentioned right here, three-time Pro Bowler, national champion in college, Super Bowl champion in the NFL, a top 15 draft pick. Jonathan, thanks a lot for coming through. Oh, anytime. You're a local guy. What do you remember about the first time you put on that orange and green Miami Hurricanes football jersey? I thought back to when I was a kid and I would watch Miami on TV and I watched the Bermuda Triangle, Michael Barrow, Darren Smith, Jesse Armstead, and I said, man, I can't wait to be like them. So... When I put it on for the first time, um, it was against McNeese State. I was a true freshman, and I remember thinking back to, wow, I'm doing what I, what I wanted to do back when I was 10 years old, and I know that there's some 10-year-old looking and saying, man, I can't wait to do what I'm doing. So uh, I made sure that I wanted to represent the jersey well, um, represent, and, and I remember watching how much fun it was that they had when they played, and I wanted to have that much fun. How about your recruiting process <laughs> as a whole? What do you remember about that? <laughs> I remember telling everyone that I'm going to Miami. Even before <laughs> I knew I was going to Miami, I just remember everyone would come down and I'd tell them, look, as soon as Miami offers me, I'm taking it. I don't, I don't care what's going on, <laughs> on, on anywhere else, but uh, as soon as Miami comes, you know, they come knocking, I'm taking it. And sure enough, uh, my senior year was midway through my senior year, they offered me. I was like, yep, I'm going. That, that's it. End of story. So uh, Florida State came down. Um, Florida came down, there were a couple other schools, and I was just like, nope, I already committed, I'm good. Well, I know Hurricane <laughs> fans are very happy you stuck with the U. I'm happy that I got here, trust me. I, I, all I wanted was Miami. Well, let's get into some film now of a future Miami Hurricane, Jonathan Garvin. Mm -hmm. He's a defensive end, 6'3", 222-pounder, at a Lake Worth, Florida. Jonathan, on another Jonathan. Jonathan, on Jonathan. <laughs> well, it, the first thing I noticed was how long he is, you know, and I, you remember, I was just asking you, are you sure he's only 6'3"? <laughs> I mean, he, he plays uh, very long. He plays like he's about 6'5". Um, and what I like is that he gets off blocks and he's explosive. Like, you, you watch a player, you have some players that they're tacklers, then you have guys that are hitters, and he's a hitter. Like, you watch this play right here, and you can see he's trying to unload on that running back, and he does. Then the next thing I like is how much ground he covers off of his first and second step. If you watch him, he's not the first one off the ball, but as soon as he gets into step one, two, three. Look how much ground he's covering. He's already passed that offensive tackle. So you're looking at a guy that has speed, he gains ground, and then he's able to turn the corner, which is every, every defensive line coach's dream, that you can have a guy that can get, a, get past that offensive tackle, and then once you get past him, can you bend again and turn that corner and get the sack? Right here, you have the same thing. He's going to come off the ball. He's not the first one off the ball. He's probably tied for first right there, getting off the ball. But as soon as he gets to one, two, three, he's past everybody. You can see it right here. He's ahead of everybody. The tackle has no chance. And then the best part about it, he's going to now be able to bend, 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 go get the sack. And that's something you can't coach. So um, I love what, what we're bringing in with Jonathan. Jonathan is a guy that he has some of those skill sets and that ability where you don't have to coach it. All you need to do is now get him bigger, get him faster, get him stronger. He's already tough. You can see he likes to play the game. He likes to hit people. He's violent when he goes. He's taking on two guys right there, an offensive tackle and a running back, still gets the sack. You'll watch here again, same thing. He's going to go, not the first one off the ball. He makes a move, makes a bend, and he gets a sack. So when you, when you talk about a player that has a chance or has the ability, those are things you're looking at. You're looking at his ability to now do the natural bending, a, a defensive end, like a Von Miller type. Now we're talking about getting him more explosive, using his technique with his hands. You know, And that's every defensive end slash defensive tackle coming out of high school. They never really use their hands because they're not taught that much because they're just so much bigger, faster, stronger than some of these players that they're playing against. So he uses his ability to, to his advantage. And then now it's a matter of the technical things and the weight. When you watch Jonathan Garvin's tape, what was the biggest thing, the most impressive aspect of his tape that you liked? The most impressive as aspect was his first three steps. His first three steps, he's able to get past that offensive tackle. Every time you saw him, if I pause it on every play that I saw right there, he was always going to be first or ahead of the rest of the defense alignment and the rest of the offense alignment. So that means his first three, three steps are very explosive. He gains a lot of ground. And then you have to, as an offensive tackle, you have to worry about that. 
when he gets a counter to that, a spin move off of it, a club move to get back inside, he can be very dangerous. And then lastly, maybe not specific to Jonathan Garvin, but to, mm. to anyone, early enrolling has become so much more popular of late, more so than when you came to school. Mm. How much do you think it can, it can really benefit for a kid to get in a few semester, a semester early, a few months early and get acclimated? It can benefit a lot because the adjustments of uh, one, being away from home, two, like I saw, like I mentioned, these guys are 10 times bigger now. <laughs> you know, you're not looking at five foot eight, 190 pound running backs. You're looking at six foot two, 230 pound running backs. Uh, getting used to the speed of, of your competition now. Getting all of that out of the way before you actually enter into a summer training program. I mean, I, I wish I could have done that. And, you know, frankly, back in the day, I would have done that if I had the opportunity because that gives you such an advantage going into summer and then into training camp and playing into the next season. Jonathan Vilma on Jonathan Garvin. Jonathan, thanks a lot for coming through. Thank you.